15 after BBC One rounds up the New Year football action in final score. Full-time whistles going around the country. Efren Koku and Gavin Peacock with me here to discuss all of those football news. But let's go straight to Anfield. Lunchtime kickoff for the leaders, Chelsea. And they responded with a win. Here's Andrew James. Well, a penny for the thoughts of Sir Alex Ferguson this evening. It was the Manchester United boss who suggested Chelsea's title challenge could falter in the north. Well, today, Sir Alex, indeed the country at large, got the Chelsea response. Liverpool did their best to present a fourth successive Chelsea win and provide a northern test of the Londoners' resolve. The cop's rendition of You'll Never Walk Alone was followed by a red onslaught that deserved a half-time lead, but didn't bring one. The longer it went, the more inevitable became, well, the inevitable. Substitute Joe Cole's shot deflected off Carragher's backside in front of a disbelieving cop. How will Chelsea cope in the north? Well, now we know. And how will Arsenal respond as they lead the chase of Chelsea? They're playing at Charlton. Dominic Cotton is watching. Yes, Mark, Arsenal are in charge here, but they uh, have been made to work hard by a rejuvenated Charlton side. Patrick Vieira and Freddie Lundberg combined to give the visitors a 35th minute lead before Talal El Kakuri's 40-yard thunderbolt brought Charlton level on the stroke of half-time. Well, Lundberg put the champions back in front with the first meaningful move of the second half before Robin Van Persie made it 3-1 after stretching the Charlton defence. We've got eight minutes left to play here and Arsenal are on course to take the points that'll keep up the pressure on the leaders' Chelsea. Before we go to White Hart Lane, a game in the championship involving those at the top. Sunderland, who were three down at Preston, now three two down. Sean Thornton with nine minutes to go as Mick McCarthy's team try and earn an unlikely point there. Let's go to the form team in the Premier League. That is Tottenham, and once again, they're doing so well. Rebecca Lowe at White Hart Lane. Incredible scoreline here, Mark. And as you come to me, Robbie Keane has just, well, no, he's almost got a sixth goal for Spurs but his lob went just wide. It gets better and better for Martin Yol. This is going to be their sixth win in seven matches. The first goal coming from young Dean Marney for his first appearance. He lifted the ball over Richard Wright. Then Reto Ziegler, the young 18-year-old, shooting home from close range. Everton pulled one back to make it 2-1 through Tim Cahill. He converted a Marcus Bent split. Pedro Mendes, though, made it 3-1. He fired home from the edge of the box 10 minutes into the second half. Robbie Keane then tapped in a close-range one to make it 4-1 and then Dean Marnie again with an absolutely beautiful curling shot from 20 yards you must watch that on match of the day in fact you might as well watch all these goals on match of the day but there's no Jermaine Defoe for Spurs he's injured but then again who cares it's 5-1 and Tottenham are playing Chelsea and Manchester United in the next few weeks that should be very interesting now a goal at Bolton Bolton against West Brom Gerald Sinstad with the news Yes, we had two teams here who between them had taken five goals from a five points from a possible 54 and both started with their leading scorer on the bench. It didn't encourage optimism. But before the quarter hour, Sandor Guerra had put West Brom in front and soon afterwards, Jeff Horsfield should have doubled the lead but missed. Yet Bolton were playing much the more studied football which should have capitalised on Albion's tendency to mass panic. However, a brilliant save by Russell Holt and a goal line stopped by Darren Purse kept the status quo. Albion have improved marginally in the second half. Bolton, though, have retained the initiative. JJ Okocha hit the bar with a free kick, and a minute or two ago, El Diouf scored the goal that brings the team's level and gives Bolton at least what they deserve. Well, Everton have pulled a goal back at White Hart Lane. It's not going to make any difference as far as the result's concerned. James McFadden with a consolation 5-2 now to Tottenham and Sol Campbell the Arsenal centre half he's just limped off with an injury at the Valley let's go to Steve Sutton next he's at St James's Park yes Mark Newcastle were cruising in the uh, first half they led by two goals to nil but it's been a different game altogether this second period they should have been at least four up by the interval Shola Amiobi gave them a six minute lead an easy close range header from a Craig Bellamy cross but Amiobi contrived to miss the virtually unmissable on the goal line Lee Bowyer forced two saves off Mike Taylor when he really should have scored yet on the stroke of half time Bowyer did get his reward Lauren Robert taking advantage of a Melchior slip to fire home 
Well, Birmingham did decide to provide some opposition, opposition in the second half. Emil Heskey saw a powerful header tipped over by Shea Given before he left the Newcastle keeper with no chance on the edge of the box on 64 minutes. Lee Bowyer has just hit the bar and uh, Newcastle have just had another shot just wide of the post. But these are anxious moments. Well, quite a few goals in the Premier League today, but not, I'm afraid, for Ivan Gaskell at Villa Park, Ivan. I wish, Mark, I wish. Uh, just four minutes to go. I don't know if these two sides made a New Year's resolution that included goals. <laughs> well, as you come to me, we found a goal at long, long last. With minutes to go, Villa had been building up some pressure in this game. Noel Solano with a downward header. It went past the goalkeeper freely, couldn't get a hand to it. And they have taken a lead, which their pressure deserves. But my, it's been a struggle here. Good timing from Ivan there. Let's go back to another lunchtime kickoff. This was a London derby, Fulham and Crystal Palace and Mark Bishop. The return of Lewis Bermorty from injury revitalised Fulham today, whose win will take a lot of pressure off Chris Coleman following a run of three consecutive defeats. Andy Cole stunned Palace with his close-range effort after latching on to Rosinski's pass inside the box. Saw should have equalised for the visitors when he headed over the bar from five yards. And when Andy Johnson then equalised from the penalty spot after it had been upended by Van der Sar, the biting wind swelling off the Thames felt even colder for the home fans. But Fulham then turned up the heat after half-time. Andy Cole showed great control from ten yards out to make it 2-1 before Rosinski stabbed home Melbron's cross, putting the match beyond reach of Palace. And it's given Fulham their first home win since October. Now, those of you who are very sharp, even on New Year's Day, will have noticed there that the Rangers goalkeeper has equalised uh, at Tannadice. Dundee United 1, Rangers 1, Stefan Kloss has equalised. All over at St James's Park, we'll go back there shortly, Newcastle have won it. Terrific goal, though, at Manchester City today. Andy Barwell can tell us all about it. Yes, it's been one of Manchester City's relatively good days. They lead 2-0 at the moment, uh, but still not totally able to finish off their opponents. The goal's a neat finish from Paul Bosfeld. And then a spectacular 30-yard shot from Sean Wright Phillips in off the post. What a goal that was. Southampton have been better in this second half, thanks to the introduction of Crouch and Fernandes. Just not their day. Kevin Phillips' effort ruled offside. And uh, David James had to pull off a good save to deny Crouch. Let's go to Portsmouth. The penalty not taken once, not taken twice. Tony Lockwood with the story. Yes, Mark, an extraordinary match in the closing minutes and standing at 1-1. And what a way for Damien Francis to see in the new footballing year. Back in the Norwich first team after a lengthy absence, it was his early goal that threatened to lead to their first away league win of the season. It doesn't look as if it's going to happen because of Yakubu. A Norwich performance all the more impressive when you consider they played almost the entire game with just 10 men. Mark Edworthy's early departure didn't unsettle them. Edworthy's shown a straight red for a crude challenge on Diamancy Camera. Portsmouth found their way back into the match. Fleming's handball. Yakubu stepped up and delivered from the spot only for Phil Dowd to order it to be retaken for encroachment. Yakubu scored at the second time of asking. Mr Dowd again asked for it to be taken for the same reason. Yakubu maintained his composure and it should be worth a point. 1-1 closing minutes. Thank you, Tony. Maybe a lifeline for Southampton in their game at Manchester City. Andy Barwell. Yes, they've got a goal back here with 30 seconds to go. Peter Crouch went down in the area under a, a challenge from Sylvain Distant. Minimal contact, it must be said. Crouch went down. Referee Chris, po uh, Chris Foy pointed to the penalty spot. And Kevin Phillips made no mistake. It's now Manchester City 2, Southampton 1. So Newcastle have won. Let's get the full story now from Steve Sutton. Well, managers often say, don't they, that the imminent arrival of new faces concentrates the minds of the players already wearing the shirts. Well, Newcastle, with two signatures in the bag and more promised, were positively galvanised in the first 45 minutes. So dominant were they, they should have been at least four to the good. Instead, Shola Amiobi and Lee Bowyer gave them two, and both players were guilty of missed chances. Birmingham, who came to St James's with four wins on the bounce, were a shadow of the team that's obviously that had put them in that sort of position. In the second half, it was a totally different proposition, though. They came out looking as if they were ready for a fight. Emil Heskey saw a, a powerful header tipped over by Shea Given before he pulled one back in the 64th. In the end, Newcastle were hanging on, but it was 2-1 to the home side.
Let's go to White Hart Lane then, two defeats in a row for Everton, but for Spurs, six wins out of seven, and in style today, Rebecca Lowe. You said it, Mark, no injured Jermaine Defoe for Spurs, but who needs him? Spurs are on a roll. They went 2-0 up inside half an hour, both goals coming from their young wide midfielders. Dean Marnie making his first start, gone on the end of Robbie Keane's flick to lift the ball over Richard Wright. Freddie Canute's flip was brought down on his chest by Reto Ziegler, who sh shot home past Wright as well. Everton got one back through Tim Cahill. Pedro Mendes then shot home from the edge of the box, and Robbie Keane tapped in from close range to make it 4-1. Marnie then made it 5 with a wonderful curling effort. James McFadden pulled one back for Everton to make it 5-2, just a consolation. Problems for David Moyes, they weren't good enough. Seven unbeaten now for Martin Yole. Let's have a word with the gents then. I mean, who, who needs Abramovich's millions, Tottenham? I mean, the, the, the story was that he wanted to go there first. What a turnaround for Spurs. Amazing. It's the turnaround of the season. And Martin Yole, with his character, his charisma and personality, has turned it around. Um, and, and the side is free-flowing. They're scoring goals. And you don't want to go and play them at the moment. They've got two huge games coming up for, for themselves, but also will have a say on the championship. They play Manchester United away. And then, in a couple of weeks, Chelsea at home. And that is a huge game anyway, but with an added importance now. It's interesting, isn't it, the way they're now playing under, uh, to, to the way they were playing under Santino when it seemed as if the fullbacks weren't really encouraged to get forward. There's, you know, the way they're, they're, they're playing now and they're attacking now, we can see the dividends. Yeah, far more positive, obviously. And Spurs, you know, have always had that tradition of trying to play attractive football. And obviously, you know, just by a by talking to a couple of players and by all the stories sort of coming out of, of Whitehall Lane is that the players are a lot more confident with the new style. Martin Joel, he obviously wants to be a lot more expressive in the way they play and you know Spurs, Spurs, Spurs were scoring goals anyway you know they're obviously le leaking quite a few early on in the season but if, you, if you're going to stick the ball in the back of the net quite often Keenan and uh, Defoe have been playing well scoring lots of goals the fans have been entertained and set, uh, 6 out of 7 and then you can't really complain so things are looking good UA for cup spot in the sights of Tottenham all over now at Villa Park we did get a goal late on Ivan Gaskell yes we did thank goodness ideal hangover fare this one plenty of resolve precious little entertainment. At least Villa can content themselves though with a scrappy win. The first half can be summed up in just two words, but as it's well before the watershed, I can't really say them. I can tell you it was poor. Short Villa's lively Noel Solano flashed a fine volley wide. Angel hits a post and Johansson headed against a Villa upright. But in rain-soaked conditions, it was a struggle. We hoped for better after the break. We didn't get it. Instead, we all got wetter. The game unbelievably got worse. What pressure there was was exerted by Villa and eventually it yielded a goal. Noel Solano's industry rewarded with a late, late-headed winner to end a poor run and a forgettable game. Well, this is working Ivan up. A good win for Wigan just going through there. Good day for them at the top of the championship, what with uh, Ipswich stumbling at home. So the gap between Ipswich and Wigan, just two points now at the top of the Coca-Cola Football League Championship. Let's go to Manchester City. A late goal for Southampton hasn't changed things, though, Andy Barwell. No, it's a victory for Manchester City. An uncomfortable end to the game for them. A match they dominated. Kevin Keegan's men did it the hard way after Kevin Phillips' last-minute penalty. But it's three points to City. It featured another spectacular goal from Sean Wright Phillips. What a precocious talent. This goal is zipped in off the post from fully 30 yards out. Paul Bosfeldt had opened the scoring, finishing off from Richard Dunn's header. Southampton boss Harry Redknapp sitting alongside first chairman Rupert Lowe. And then assistant Jim Smith did their impressions of grumpy old men. No James Beattie today. Harry will do well to spend that money wisely. We'll talk a little bit later about James Beattie and where he might be going. They're still playing at the Valley, 3-1 to Arsenal there, but they're not playing at Fratton Park anymore. Tony Lockwood. No, Mark, it's finished 1-1 and a few more performances like this on the road for Nigel Worthington's Norwich and they must just start to begin to believe that they can maintain their premiership status. The worst possible start, Mark Edworthy sent off after just five minutes for a reckless, ruthless challenge on camera. They responded perfectly. Damien Francis found the top corner. What a way to mark his return to the first team after a five-week absence. Yakubu equalised in the penalty spot. Extraordinary penalty this. Three times he had to take it, and at the third time of asking, he found the net. Twice he converted it, but referee Phil Dowd wanted it retaken for encroachment. In the latter stages, Robert Green illustrating his England credentials with a string of fine saves. It ended 1-1 at Fratton Park. 
Preston have hung on to beat Sunderland by three goals to two at Deepdale. Preston were 3-0 up there. All over at the Valley, Arsenal keeping up the pressure on Chelsea. Then Dominic Cotton. Yes, Mark, Arsenal keep Chelsea in their sights at the top of the table, but didn't have it all their own way here. Charlton deserves to be level at the break, and the strike that made it one all will surely win goal of the month, whatever happens over the next four weeks. Uh, they went behind after 35 minutes, the persistence of Patrick Vieira and close control of Freddie Lundberg, their undoing. Then came that showstopper, Talal El Kakuri hitting a free kick with deadly precision from fully 40 yards. His effort was rendered meaningless minutes after the restart, however, Lundberg getting his second after neat Arsenal build-up play down the right. The champion soon had a third goal, Robin Van Persie stretching the Charlton defence before unleashing a fierce and unstoppable shot. Sol Campbell limped off five minutes from time. Even so, Arsenal will be buoyed by a fourth straight win. They will not, it seems, be giving up their title without a fight. Manchester United, of course, still very much in the championship title race. They're playing at Middlesbrough, 5.30 kick-off there. Now, what about Bolton? They've had a miserable run of late. Have they at least got something from a home game with West Brom? Gerald Sinstad. I think they have. From fourth in the table, Bolton had lost six games in a row, and for a long time it seemed that Zoltan Guerra's goal for West Brom would mean a seventh successive defeat. But throughout there were signs that Bolton were a capable side whose timing was a little awry, and late on El Hajj Diouf gave them the equaliser all their pressure had merited. Albion, I fear, look a hopeless case, with only one Premiership win all season. But, as we were reminded by flags at half-mast and a minute's silence, there are people in this world with much more to concern them than three points. Let's go into the championship then. A very good day for Wigan. Ipswich lost, Sunderland lost, but Wigan won. David Hurst with the story. Yes, that's right, Mike. Just the tonic for Wigan after those festive blues. 2-0 the result, but it could have been 4 or 5. The Wigan players responding perfectly after those three straight defeats, showing a, a steely determination from the off. The goals in either half. The first early on, a sumptuous right-footed volley from Lee McCulloch. The second a header from a corner by Nathan Ellington, his 15th goal of the season. Sheffield United can have no complaints here. Wigan uh, overcame a, a gusting wind and a, and a finicky referee in uh, Andy Hall and should have scored a few more goals. Andy uh, 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 Leighton Baines hit the woodwork and Jason Roberts missed a couple of gilt edge chances. Wigan deserve winners here. We'll get more from Effen and from Gavin as we look back at the day's action. But now let's get the classified results with Tim Gudgeon. And we open with the Barclays Premiership. Aston Villa 1, Blackburn Rovers 0. Bolton Wanderers 1, West Bromwich Albion 1. Charlton Athletic 1, Arsenal 3. Fulham 3, Crystal Palace 1. Liverpool 0, Chelsea 1. Manchester City 2, Southampton 1. Middlesbrough and Manchester United kick off at half past five. Newcastle United 2, Birmingham City 1. Portsmouth 1, Norwich City 1. Tottenham Hotspur 5, Everton 2. <coughs> the Coca-Cola Football League Championship, Burnley and Leicester City's match was abandoned as 0-0. Derby County 0, Cardiff City 1. Gillingham 0, Reading 0. Epswich Town 0, West Ham United 2. Leeds United 0, Crew Alexandra 2, Nottingham Forest 1, Stoke City 0, Preston North End 3, Sunderland 2, Queen's Park Rangers 0, Brighton and Hove Albion 0, Rotherham United 1, Coventry City 2, Sheffield United 0, Wigan Athletic 2, Watford 1, Millwall 0, Wolverhampton Wanderers 1, Plymouth Argyle 1. The Coca-Cola Football League 1, Barnsley 0, Hartlepool United 0, Bournemouth 3, Brentford 2, Bristol City 2, Peterborough United 0, Hull City 2, Huddersfield Town 1, Luton Town 1, Sheffield Wednesday 1, Milton Keynes Dons 1, Chesterfield 1, Oldham Athletic 2, Tranmere Rovers 2, Port Vale 0, Bradford City 1, Swindon Town 0, Colchester United 3, Torquay United 1, Stockport County 2, Walsall 1, Doncaster Rovers 1, Wrexham 1, Blackpool 2. League 2, Cambridge United 0, Boston United 1, Cheltenham Town 0, Lotts County 2, Leighton Orient 2, Kidderminster Harriers 1, Lincoln City 1, 
Bury 0, Macclesfield Town 1, Chester City 2, Northampton Town 2, Mansfield Town 1, Oxford United 2, Wickham Wanderers 1. Rochdale and Grimsby Town's match was abandoned, score 0-0. Scunthorpe United 0, Darlington 1, Shrewsbury Town 2, Bristol Rovers 0, Southend United 3, Rushton and Diamonds 0, Swansea City 0, Yeovil Town 2. The Nationwide Conference, Canvey Island 4, Dagenham and Redbridge 2, Barnborough Town 0, Woking 0, Forest Green 0, Aldershot Town 0, Gravesend and Northfleet 0, Crawley Town 0, Hereford United 1, Exeter City 2. North of Victoria and Lee RMI's match was abandoned with Lee RMI leading 2 1. Tamworth 0, Burton Albion 2. The Bank of Scotland Premier League, Celtic and Livingston play on Sunday. The Pools panel say home win. Dundee United 1, Rangers 1. Dunfermline Athletic 3, Dundee 1. Inverness Caledonian Thistle and Kilmarnock's match postponed. And the Pools panel say score draw. Motherwell and Aberdeen's match postponed. The panel say home win. Bell Scottish Football League First Division. Clyde 1, Airdrie United 0. Falkirk 2, Wraith Rovers 0. Queen of the South 1, Hamilton Academicals 2. Ross County's match with St Johnson was postponed. The panel say away win. St Mirren 1, Partick Thistle 1. And the Scottish Second Division, Alloa Athletic and Stirling Albion's match postponed. Arbroath 0, Forfar Athletic 2, Air United 0, Stranraer 1, Brecon City 4, Berwick Rangers 1, Morton 3, Dumbarton 0. And Scottish Third Division, Albion Rovers match with Queen's Park postponed. Cowdenbeath 1, East 5 1. East Stirlingshire and Stenhouse, Stenhouse Muir's match postponed. Montrose 2, Gretna 3. The Welsh Premier, Avon Lido 0, Port Talbot Town 1. Bangor City 2, Carnarvon Town 0. Carnarvon Town 4, Haverford West 2. Welshpool Town 5, TNS 2. And the Pools News, if you want to check whether you've started the year as a millionaire, see facts page 312. Let's have a look at the tables then, the way they uh, start the new year with the Premiership. Chelsea begin their centenary year on course for the second title in their history, exactly 50 years after the first. Arsenal remain five points back, but they've won four in a row since drawing with Chelsea on December the 12th. Manchester United will look to put daylight between them and Everton when they take on Borough a little later. Everton's White Hart Lane jinx struck again. They suffered back-to-back -back defeats for the first time this season and Tottenham are back up to seventh after their sixth win in seven. At the bottom, West Brom could have pulled level with Southampton on points, but for that late equaliser at the Reebok. The Saints, meanwhile, have taken just one point from 12 under Harry Redknapp. Palace are back in the bottom three as Norwich's point lifts them out of the relegation zone. Blackburn and Fulham switch places. Onto the championship, leaders Ipswich lost their unbeaten home record, going down 2-0 to fifth-placed West Ham. Wigan are now two points behind the Suffolk side after an impressive win at Sheffield United. Sunderland dropped to third after a 3-2 defeat at Preston. Richard Cresswell scored a hat-trick for Preston. Reading stay fourth after a goalless draw at Gillingham. And at the bottom, Rotherham's festive resurgence ended with a 2-1 defeat against Coventry. Uh, the division's bottom side are now 11 points adrift of safety. Despite a win for Forrest and Gillingham's draw, Cardiff stayed just above the drop zone after a 1-0 victory at Derby. League One at the top. Luton were held at home by Sheffield Wednesday, but they remain top on goal difference. A seventh straight win for Hull has hauled them level on points. Tranmere slipped two points further back after drawing at Oldham. Bournemouth and Bradford both climbed two places as Hartlepool drop out of the playoff zone. At the bottom, Stockport's first away win in 11 sees them close the gap to Wrexham to four points. Wrexham and Peterborough both lost and slip a place as MK Dons picked up a point against Chesterfield. Blackpool ended a three-match losing run to move three points above the relegation zone. Top of two, 10-man Scunthorpe lost only their second home game of the season with Alan Armstrong's goal giving Darlington the points. Yeovil are now level on points at the top after beating third-place Swansea 2-0. 
Southend are four points off the automatic promotion places after beating Rushton, Northampton, Leapfrog, Macclesfield. At the bottom, Steve Thompson still waiting for his first points as Cambridge manager after League Two's bottom side lost at home to Boston. Two late goals condemned Kidderminster to defeat at Leighton Orient, wins for Shrewsbury and Notts County mean Rushton are now just one place above the relegation zone. Let's have a look at the conference then. Top two, Barnet and Carlisle both have home games tomorrow. The Bees are 11 points clear at the top and red-hot favourites for the solitary automatic promotion spot. Hereford missed out on the chance to move level with the Cumbrians as they lost at home to Exeter, who sit four. Stevenage complete the playoff zone, but they do play Barnet tomorrow. And Scotland at the top. Rangers reclaim top spot from Celtic thanks to that incredible injury time equaliser from their goalkeeper, Stefan Kloss. Dundee United, who began the day at the foot of the table, looks set for a shock win through David McCracken's header. Celtic will lead the table by three points if they beat Levingston tomorrow. And at the bottom, Dundee United rise two places to 10th after their point today. Dundee replace their city rivals at the bottom. They lost 3-1 at Dunfermline in today's other game. The Pars rise one place to eighth. And that's the top of the first division in Scotland. Paul Kirk still out in front. As you were at the top then, Chelsea won, Arsenal won. They won 3-1 at the Valley. Here's Arsene Wenger, the Arsenal manager. Arsene, happy new year, well done. Yes, it was a difficult game against a good team. Charlton is a good side and uh, they are at the moment confident, you know, and uh, they have good players. And we needed really, uh, they just came back to 1-1 just before half-time in a little bit of a controversial way. But uh, then we scored straight away the 2-1 and the 3-1, of course, uh, gave us a good cushion. The, the referee gave a free kick for Patrick Vieira's challenge on, on Danny Murphy. Did you disagree with that for the equalising goal? Well, uh, he, ga he gave it at the moment where it was uh, surprising because uh, we had a two against two on the other side of the field. But, you know, uh, maybe he thought they would win the ball or not. I don't know. If it was it a foul or not? I don't know. And then uh, they contested as well the second goal we scored uh, because we uh, apparently Van Persie came uh, laid back from an offside position. I don't know. But... I think overall uh, it was a very good game and Charlton deserves a lot of credit, they have a good side and uh, they gave us a hard time and we needed really an average Arsenal side today would not have won this game. Well gents, full credit to Chelsea because they're keeping the pressure on, they, they tend to be playing before Arsenal, winning, Arsenal responding but probably Arsenal would have anticipated that Chelsea might have dropped a couple of points today. Well it was a, it was a massive result for, for Chelsea, um, I was watching the game and I was looking at them and I was thinking now when you look at Chelsea, it's a tight game and you think maybe they're not going to get anything out of this game or just the point, you're always confident they can do something and come up with something or Mourinho will make a change and, and he did today. But full credit to Arsenal as well because they're playing under the pressure of that result on top of them and, and, the, and they're coming up. Van Persie scoring today was big for them because they've not had a player to step up to the mantle of Bergkamp. Reyes is not yet to do it, Van Persie's not yet to do it. If they can get someone to do that, then they'll be a really top, top side. We'll hear more from Effen later. You can see all the goals this evening on Match of the Day with Gary Lineker. That's at 11.30. And I'll be here on Tuesday night with another Match of the Day. That's at 10.35. Then we'll have all the goals from Monday and Tuesday's games. The FA Cup third round starts on the BBC on Saturday. We've three live games for you over the weekend. A Match of the Day on Saturday night with all the goals and just maybe even a shock or two. Our coverage of the World Darts Championship begins this evening at 6.30, that's on BBC Two, and you can see every dart interactively from the lakeside during the tournament. And still to come, stay with us on Score Eye as we look ahead to Monday and Tuesday's games. We'll discuss the opening of the transfer window, we'll have reaction from the Premiership games today and predictions from the gents on 2005. Join us for that. Bye-bye.